People even in surveying say surveying is part art and part science, and I always take exception to that and say, well, it's a, it's a lot of law. Boundary surveying is a function. How we do a, approach a boundary survey is purely and simply a function of what the courts have said about how to do these things. Nobody ever sat down and wrote a book and said, yeah, I think, I think I'm going to make up some rules on how to do boundary surveys. What happens is there have been thousands and thousands and thousands of court cases over the years related to deeds and descriptions and surveys and boundaries and, and, and the courts tend, to, as they do with many things, they tend to fall in the same place time after time after time and we call that the weight of authority. So that, for example, in a, in a description that says thence south 200 feet to the right-of-way of 56th Street and we find out the right-of-way of 56th Street is not 200 feet, it's 202 feet, we have, a, we have a quandary now. Well, the courts have said, no, a call to something, which is called a controlling call, a call to 56th Street will override the distance. So the distance becomes just information that might tell you about where to expect to find 56th Street, but what really controls is the call for 56th Street. So uh, all of almost all of our boundary decisions are related to that sort of thing. We have to understand what the courts have said and what the weight of authority is in case of common law. So that's the, the, the law part of surveying. The science part is mostly the measuring. And, and Wes Day always used to say, anybody can measure. We have, we have great equipment. In five minutes, we could have any of you measuring to the nearest couple of millimeters. The problem is knowing where to measure from and where to measure to. That's, that's, the, that's the thing. So the science is the measuring and the, the equipment and, and the physics involved in all that, and GPS. And then the art is, some of that is just preparation of drawings. Some of that is just the kind of innate sense that sometimes people have. And some people have this and some people don't. John Alexander is a good example. He and I may go out and we look around and, and, the, and the field crew has been looking for something. They can't find it. And we walk out and we say, did you look over there? And they go look over there and there it is. And why? Because I don't know why. We just, it's just, you know, that's just part of that experience and that stuff that you get. And I would call that kind of the art side. So that's just a little introduction. Surveying actually goes back to the, the Egyptians, at, at least, and uh, and there are there is history. I just I just sent somebody a court case from Indiana in 2005 that gives a whole history of adverse possession. And some of you don't know what adverse possession is, but if you you everyone has heard of the term squatter's rights, and adverse possession is kind of the more modern uh, iteration of squatter's rights. And this 2005 court case. The, the Indiana Supreme Court talked about the history of adverse possession all the way back to the year 2000 BC. And then and up to 1066, the Norman invasion of England, and all the way up through all of Indiana history. So surveying gets, it, it just gets kind of interesting. Public lands right here were originally surveyed in 1821. So when we go out looking for a particular corner, we are potentially needing to understand what happened in October 1821 when they did that survey. It is pretty unique from the standpoint of most professions. You know, doctors could care less how somebody fixed a broken bone in 1821. And uh, some, to some extent, you get involved with it in the, in, the, in the accounting side probably, and to some extent in forensic engineering. But generally, people don't care what happened 100, 150, 180 years ago. But we deal with this every single day, all the time we do.